Okay, guys, let's talk about phase. Now, <clears throat> when a lot of people are having trouble with this, um, it's definitely not the easiest subject out there for sound quality. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of math, science behind it. Um, obviously, it's just a kind of natural phenomenon, but um, obviously there's a lot of math to explain it. So we're just going to kind of go over some of the basics here. Um, so say you have your sine wave, okay? That's a, say a 100 hertz tone. Um, each of these lines is representative of a 90 degree phase shift. Uh, these are all say 100 hertz tones, could be 1000 hertz, could be 500 hertz, whatever the case may be. Um, they're all the same frequency. So you're starting at zero up here at the top of it is 90 degrees, and when it crosses back over the middle line, that's 180 degrees. So uh, I went ahead and highlighted these two here for you guys. These are 180 degrees out of phase. Now, these are actually shifted by 180 degrees because this one, sorry, this one down here starts at going down this one up here starts going up. Now, if they were the same note being played, um, say like here, actually let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> we'll, go, we'll get to that part in a second. So anyway, um, so this one would be 90 degrees out of phase and Basically, it's starting up at the top. Now, obviously, that's not how music works. Blah, blah, blah. Not a big deal. Um, just going over the basics here. So, say like here, okay? Phase shift, 90 degrees. A starts here. B starts here. Peaks are at different times. This is basically um, time here in milliseconds, seconds, whatever you want to call it, probably milliseconds or um, decimal points of milliseconds. So here A is leading B by 90 degrees, B is leading A by 90 degrees. Now here, they're 180 degrees out of phase. Now this is when you start getting all sorts of cancellations and nastiness. Um, you will up here too, but not quite as bad as 180 degrees out of phase. Now, that's one of the differences when people talk about out of phase. Now, I've always said that just because something is not out of phase does not mean that it is in phase. And this is what I'm talking about here. Technically, this is out of phase. 180 degrees, complete opposite. These are technically not in phase. I mean, therefore, Technically, they are out of phase, but that's not what we're talking about when we say out of phase or flipped phase. Now, uh, say B is not even here, okay? And B starts here and follows it just like this. Again, that would be, say, 10, 15 degrees out of phase. Now, they're not in phase because they're not right on top of each other. If you had... Uh, say this sine wave here, it starts here. If they were in phase, they'd obviously both be right on top of each other. Now, 90 degrees, it would start here, 180 degrees, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Now, when you flip the phase, uh, there we go. Now, when you flip the phase, it would look something like this. Yes, my drawing skills are awesome. That would be a flipped phase. Now, technically, you could be 360 degrees out of phase. So you'd have 90 degrees, 180, uh, 270, 360. So it would start here. Whatever sine wave you are trying to recreate, music note, bass note, whatever the case may be. And it would look like, and even to a point, it would sound like they're in phase. However, where this one started over here, the say this is your left mid here, your right mid started playing over here. Now, again, they're not technically 
I mean, they're out of phase by 360 degrees, but they would sound like they're in phase. Now, if you went ahead and shifted that starting point over here to where they were right on top of each other, that is, that is correct. That's what you want. Um, it's just kind of a matter of playing with it and getting it to where you want. Um, so that's the difference now. So this is more what it would look like if phase was shifted. And this is what it would look like more if the phase was flipped. Like if you reverse the polarity on a speaker, this is more what you're going to get. Now, uh, as far as frequency goes, when you get into, um, uh, let's go ahead and do this. So now this is, it looks very even because it is. Um, this is just a snare drum hit once a second, every second for five minutes long. Um, it's a track that I had a buddy make in a studio um, just to really try and dial in time alignment. Now, um, this is frequency analysis down here. And as you can see, um, most of the body of uh, the snare drum where it's mostly hitting is down here um, in this region, but we're not gonna get into that right now. So here's the sine wave. Now you might say, let's see, let's see if I can get it to focus there. So now you have separate sine waves. That's the snare drum hit. So this is basically what it sounds like. Now, basically what you're seeing each of these every time that snare drum hits. Now, if you'd say, oh cool, there's the peak, so that's where I need to line it up. But when you really start looking at it, this is the beginning of one snare drum hit. So if you were, uh, you want all your speakers when they arrive at your ears to be starting here. So if they were, uh, say 360 degrees out, you'd have one here. Well, you have a really complex waveform here trying to be recreated. And then uh, a more simple waveform here, relatively speaking. So, you're gonna have one speaker trying to play this little double hump thing going on, and the other one trying to play more of a standard sine tone. Uh, again, if this started over here, they would sound like they were in phase, but they wouldn't be. And now what you can do is, like when you're adjusting um, your DSP, go over to time, and you're moving your sliders um, you know, adjusting left and right, say at 5.8, it sounds in phase, and then it would be out of phase, out of phase, out of phase, out of phase, in phase. Now, both of those are going to sound in phase, but you have to listen for which one sounds like it's more together, and also which one sounds um, like it has more impact. So... Let's see. So you want to make sure everything's in phase playing with each other. And that's where you're going to get um, the really cool staging stuff and uh, like holographic imaging where if there's a guitar on the stage left and a guitar on stage right, they don't bleed into each other. Um, it sounds like there's kind of black holes on the stage between instruments and singers and that kind of stuff. Um, kind of like holographic imaging, and that's really cool when you can achieve that. Um, now, as far as resolution goes, uh, I'm not talking about New Year's here, talking about how fine you can adjust your DSP. Um, a lot of DSPs, it's 0 0.02 milliseconds. Um, the Helix actually does it in distance, technically, so 
like there's one, um, or it goes from point. 486 to 0.488 milliseconds because it's adjusting it in um, millimeters technically now obviously the more fine adjustment you can have the better some people say you really don't need really fine adjustment I highly beg to differ um, like if you go over here this is a uh, 6k uh, sorry 6k pink noise now, from the peak of one sine wave to the next, get that out of here, uh, 0.4186 seconds and 0.4183-ish. So that is 0 0.2, sorry, that is 0 0.2 milliseconds between the top of each sine wave. Now, if you only had, say, 0.1 millisecond resolution on your DSP, you're basically gonna be flipping the phase top to bottom each time, uh, each time you click it. Uh, for like a 30 or 40 hertz tone, even a 600 hertz tone, that's not gonna be a huge deal. <clears throat> but when you start getting into time alignment of tweeters and stuff where everything is much closer together, it really starts to um, take effect on that. So um, even at 0 0.01 milliseconds, which is pretty much what the Helix does. So at 0 0.1 milliseconds, um, you basically be adjusting from one sine wave to the next. Now, uh, with 0 0.01 milliseconds, you basically have 10 points that you can adjust at 6K, 10 points that you could adjust between uh, one wave to the next. If you only had 0 0.02 milliseconds, that's only five points that you can take. So it would basically be, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, Five. Basically, you're rotating it by 90 degrees every time. Now, again, on something like this, that wouldn't be that difficult. But when you start getting into more complex waveforms and stuff like this, like the snare drum hit, um, it gets a lot more critical. So, basically, that's a couple of the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, phase shift versus flipping the phase. Now, like we talked about on here, um, shifting the phase means you're literally sliding that over. Again, think of, think of this here as time. Now, like I said, when you flip the phase, that's when you get something like here. <coughs> now, phase shift, like we talked about is literally shifting the waveform over. Now when people start talking about phase shift during uh, crossovers and stuff, and we'll go over crossovers more in depth later, maybe that'll be the next video. Um, right in here is where the phase shift occurs at the crossover point. Now, that being said, so right at 500 Hertz, um, Butterworth filter, so it's down three dB, at 500 Hertz. Now it's not like here everything's in phase to perfectly together and right after 500 it's 180 degrees out of phase. That's not how it works. Within this whole curve here that's where everything starts slowly shifting from one point over 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 until it's 180 degrees um, out of phase for the rest of everything. Um, typically, typically in like a home crossover network, that's why you would reverse the polarity of uh, the tweeter. Um, and that also has to do with crossovers within that um, network. Like if we take, if we take this in here, say you're mid to tweeter, um, that's where everything's gonna be shifting together at the same point. 
where these cross is the crossover point. But again, uh, maybe crossovers will be the next in-depth topic discussion. Um, we'll just have to see. Uh, you guys tell me what you want to see. Again, uh, I'm way over on time here, but like the video, subscribe it, subscribe to the channel. Um, really helps me kind of see what you guys are more interested in and develop further videos to help you guys out. Uh, just trying to pass along good information, good knowledge. Um, so anyway, like it, subscribe. Till next time, peace.